I'm Lisa Birnbach for Houdini.com, and today's topic is cyberbullying. What is it? Our guest is Rachel Simmons, author of Odd Girl App, published by Harcourt. Hi. Hi. My daughter has been on the wrong side of uh, being bullied on the internet. Groups of kids get together, and I am one another in clusters, and, uh, and they say horrible things. And, and that's I've just heard the stories. Beginning. I've heard stories of sexual language used by kids who don't even know what they're saying, too. Yeah, yeah it's true. I mean, being online and, and sending nasty messages to each other is just the beginning. Cyberbullying is using electronic devices. It could be, um, you know, a handheld device like a telephone. It could be a computer to slander people's reputation, to threaten people, to express all kinds of violent and hateful messages towards them. It happens in so many different ways. I mean, ways that are almost too many to count. One of them is by sending messages. Um, other things that are happening now are taking embarrassing photos of, of kids and putting them up on personal web pages or um, social networking pages like MySpace and Facebook. Other things that are happening are the stealing of passwords, using passwords to break into someone's account and impersonate them, and then go around online saying things that are not true, that damage their reputation and other people's. And the internet doesn't, things don't die. Things follow you around forever and ever. Well, I that's mean, the thing. it's a real problem. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing. The internet has really become the new bathroom wall for kids but it's a totally different kind of bathroom wall because you can basically put that bathroom wall in everybody's house right. and things will live on and continue to be forwarded forever um, it's a terrible problem in fact a study recently came out showing that one-third of all teenagers have been cyber bullied at some point and that girls are twice as likely to have rumors spread about them than boys oh, sure. also more girls than boys are reporting being cyber bullied and I think girls in particular are vulnerable because girls like to talk they like to chat. The other point I'm, I'm going to make, which I, might be interesting to you guys, is that um, one of the other problems with the internet is that kids are using it as a crutch to avoid face-to-face -face conversations that are so important to their development. So conflict that they know they need to have to resolve a problem they're going to have in a different way, maybe in a crueler way, online. Absolutely. It could be that, or it could even be something like asking someone out on a date or having a difficult conversation that's not even a conflict, but that involves embarrassment or awkwardness. We all remember, if you grew up without the internet, that stress of having to ask somebody a question that was hard to ask and waiting for the answer. Kids can avoid that entirely now by sitting behind the safety of their computer monitors. The trouble is they're not developing the social skills that they need in order to become functional adults who can handle those face-to-face -face oh, conversations. Oh, that's a great point, Rachel. I hadn't even thought of that. Because here's what it is. is like they're so, think about your child. Think about how many photographs she's taken versus how many photographs you've taken. She's probably taken more photographs in the few years that she's been on the planet than you've taken in all the years you've been on the planet. Right. They have a totally different relationship to media. They are constantly photographing themselves, they're constantly throwing their photographs up on the internet, um, exchanging them. So for them, there's a sense that the internet is okay to put whatever you want on it. There's no privacy there, but they think there is. So they'll send a, a photo to somebody and, and say, oh, please don't forward this, and they have no idea. Rachel, I sort of believe in spying on your kids because you don't know who's uh, writing to them on the internet. You don't know if they're getting spam that's really pornographic or scary. So that's my opinion. What's your opinion? All right, there's different levels of spying. Level one is you have, you are able to come up behind your child and if she minimizes the page, then you ask her to maximize it and if it's inappropriate, you've discovered something's not okay. You can also go through her history, see the websites she's been visiting. I think all of that is acceptable. If you're really concerned, the next step is move the computer out of the privacy of your child's room and make her use it in a public spot. And you do that in order to foster what, let's say, trust? Well, no. I mean, I think at that point there is no, there's not going to be trust and your child will be very, very upset and feel violated. And I think understandably so. At the same time, as a parent, you obviously have the right to monitor what your child's doing, especially if you have reason to believe that she's engaging in inappropriate behavior online. Right. Um, the other couple tips that I just want to give for parents is um, one of the biggest problems that happens is password sharing. I regularly pull groups of girls to find out how many of them have shared their password with their best friend and I can't tell you how many hands go up. The trouble with that is that when something goes sour between you and your best friend, she could use your password, hand it out, and make you vulnerable to people pretending to be you, breaking into your account, altering your personal information. Talk to your child about not sharing the password. Great tell idea. your child it's like a credit card or a PIN number, and just as she does not see you handing out your credit card to your best friend, 
you, she should not be handing out her password to her best friend. It doesn't matter how BFF you are, your password is your own. The other thing was this. The way to cut down on drama online is by cutting your child's access to being online. I think that the internet is a form of media that's no different from television, magazines, music. If you are regulating your child's access to those things, to music, to television, to movies, so too should you be regulating their access to the internet. I believe kids should have as much access to the internet every day as they do to television. So if they get two hours of TV a night, there should be two hours of online a night. It should not be on all the time like a white noise in the background because that will always leave your child open to engaging in whatever it is you're worried about, whether it's cyberbullying or worse. Great advice, really great advice. Thank you, Rachel. For Houdini.com, I'm Lisa Birnbach.